A word that sounds very familiar when it comes to the church is sanctuary. A sanctuary. What is a sanctuary? Sometimes people use the term to describe the church itself. We hear about nature sanctuaries, something that protects, I guess we could say. The word itself comes from the Latin word that means holy. It's a place, perhaps a holy place. Another way to look at that is that a sanctuary is a place where holiness is, a place that is filled with holiness. It's a place where we go to commune with God because God is present there, because God is holy, and everywhere he is, he makes to be a holy place. And this spiritual life that we embark upon as Christians is the goal of it is to search for sanctuary, to be present everywhere and all times in a sanctuary. And so today I want to talk about two different types of sanctuaries. The one, as I mentioned at the beginning, are these four walls. Churches are places that are set aside, that are designated and blessed for a special purpose. And we call God's presence into them in our worship and in our prayers. And churches are dedicated for that purpose. They are sanctuaries, no doubt. But there's another type of sanctuary that's even, I shouldn't say it's even more important. It's as important. And that sanctuary is the one inside of our hearts. The interior sanctuary is just as real and just as important as this building that we're in right now. We can't always come to the church at all times, every time we want to, perhaps, but we're blessed because we have the sanctuary of our hearts. Sometimes we don't feel like our hearts are a sanctuary. Life can feel busy, we can feel out of sorts, we can feel perhaps out of control, or outside of ourselves, that a part of us inside is hurting and is lost. And to speak to that, I'd like to call to our mind the gospel reading that we heard today. We heard the story of the Gergesene or the Gadarene demoniacs. This story is present in the gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All three of those gospels have this encounter between Christ and, in some accounts, it's one, in some accounts, it's two men who lived in the tombs, who were possessed by demons, who were out of control. These men were suffering, they were hurting, and they were kicked out of their homes, they were kicked out of their community, the sanctuary of their community, of the holy people that they lived with, they were kicked out to go live in the tombs, and in much the same way, their, act, their exterior environment was a manifestation of their interior environment. They lost the sanctuary, the physical sanctuary, and they had also lost sight of the sanctuary inside their own hearts. They're mirror images for us. But as we remember that the words of Christ, that the kingdom of heaven is within you, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Christ himself is within you. And we have the blessing to be able to descend inside of ourselves into a sanctuary, to be purified, to be enlightened, and to commune with God. Because that's what we do in sanctuaries. We commune with God. The men in the gospel possessed by the demons, were out of control. They were out of control and felt as though they were controlled by something else. And then my favorite is in the gospel account of the story in Mark and Luke. It ends with this beautiful image. We'd met these men who were, who were living in the tombs. They were barbaric. They were, they were, out of, they were outside of themselves, we could say. And the gospel encount ends after they encountered Christ and were healed of their disorders, 
their disordered nature, their disordered hearts. It says that these men were sitting at the feet of Christ, listening to him, clothed and in their right mind. They were clothed and in their right mind. And so for all of us, when we think about our interior lives, we think about the clutter in our minds, it almost feels like we're out of our minds sometimes. Like these men, we can feel lost and confused and conflicted and out of control. But what we do in the church, what we do in the spiritual life, is to spend time getting to know ourselves. We spend time getting to know the things that I struggle with, getting to spend time considering the person that I want to be. And as we get to know ourselves, we have compassion upon ourselves. And in that compassion, we commune with Christ. So as we sit in silence in our prayers, in our daily prayers, even if it's for just two minutes, or one minute even, or 15 seconds, we sit in silence and we ask Christ to fill us, to show us the sanctuary in our hearts, to remind us that there is holiness and there is goodness accessible every moment of our lives inside of our hearts. And as we do that and we grow and we come to access and know Christ more perfectly within us, we also will be in our right minds, properly ordered, living a proper and healthy life, and growing in holiness, and manifesting outside of ourselves the sanctuary that is always within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the